Hello, you're watching PC Jack. I'm really excited for today's video as I'm going to be challenging myself to something I've wanted to do for a very long time. As we approach the midway point of 2022, with the release of the Steam Deck along with high profile YouTubers like Linus Tech Tips starting to use Linux, it's starting to gain a lot more mainstream popularity and I've always wondered where I could actually daily drive Linux myself. Now my only other prior experience with Linux have been using Linux Mint which I only used on my HTPC and it didn't actually get used for any gaming or demanding tasks back in the day, so I've never actually run Linux on my main rig Big Red. But this video marks the first part in my long running series focusing on my experience using Linux, the inevitable difficulties I'm going to encounter, and at the end of the series the question of whether I will actually return back to Windows. And part 1 will be focusing specifically on the actual installation process, getting drivers installed, and just general OS optimizations before we look at other tasks in later videos. Disclaimer, I am absolutely no expert when it comes to Linux, so of course I am going to make some pretty silly mistakes I would guess, but if I am doing something really wrong, please let me know down in the comments below, or if there is someone else that is trying to go through the same experience as me, make sure to help them out as well and not just blast them for being inexperienced when it comes to what is actually a pretty daunting task transferring from Windows to a fairly unusual operating system. Now before I can begin my transition to Linux, there's a couple of things we need to answer first. First question, why install Linux? So while Windows is going to be the most simple and compatible experience you can get for a desktop environment, it does also come with the addition of a lot of bloatware and a lot of privacy settings that are a bit intrusive on the average user. And I haven't even mentioned that activate Windows watermark which will remain on your desktop until you actually pay for a license. Instead, what Linux can offer is a much more stripped down and bare bones OS experience with a lot more user control enabled for yourself in order to make sure your system doesn't get bloated down with the usual stuff you would get with a general Windows install. Of course, since Linux doesn't have the market share that Windows has built up over decades, this does mean that developers aren't really as keen at supporting Linux as they would be for Windows, so you will encounter situations where certain programs you would usually use on Windows just will have a lot of trouble running on Linux or just won't run at all. I'll go into further details of what kind of applications these are when we get to it, but ultimately Linux is the OS for the user that wants the ultimate control over their desktop environment and is a privacy conscious individual who wants a more challenging and rewarding experience for a desktop environment. Second question, which distro should you use? So when I say distro, I'm referring to the actual installation of Linux that you're intending to install or a flavor of Linux as you will. There's Linux Mint, Red Hat, Arch Linux, Ubuntu and a ton of other distros you can choose from with varying skill levels. Today I'll be installing Pop! OS which is a fairly gaming centric beginner friendly distro you can go for and if I don't get on with it I may end up switching to Linux Mint depending on how it goes but that's the beauty of going for Linux is you can get into a lot of distro hopping from time to time. If you're unsure of which one to try you can always boot up a demo version on USB stick and take a little look in the actual desktop itself before you actually commit to installing to your boot drive. But I definitely recommend trying something like Pop! OS which is much more beginner friendly compared to other distros and if you're unfamiliar with Linux it might be the best way to go. Third question, can you still game on Linux? Yes you can. Gaming has improved considerably on Linux over the last couple of years, even more so with Valve's implementation of the Proton compatibility layer. If you look at ProtonDB you'll see thousands of games that are supported on Linux now and this list does grow day by day. Where things get a little tricky though is multiplayer titles that feature anti-cheat. Anti-cheat can be a huge pain on Linux and can actually mean that some tiles you can normally run on Windows perfectly fine just will not work whatsoever on Linux. Now with the release of the Steam Deck, Valve is working much more closely with third party developers in order to ensure that their anti-cheat measures don't block out Steam Deck users. But for now though, if you play games that feature anti-cheat, using Linux may not be the best idea for you if you do want to continue to play those games. Personally, I don't play many multiplayer titles myself, so I don't think this is going to be something that we're going to encounter in this series too much. Finally, how do you install a Linux distro? Well, if you've ever installed Windows, then you probably have no problems with installing Linux, but I'll show you the full process later in this video. So, to get Pop! OS installed, we are going to go to this website, where we're going to actually download the ISO file to create a bootable USB, and then we can use that to actually install Pop! OS on my main system. So, we're on this website, so we're going to head to Download, and for me, I'm going to need to download the one for NVIDIA because I'm using an NVIDIA graphics card. So if you have an AMD card, you would have to go for one of the different installations. But if you're running NVIDIA, this is the one you need to go for. So we're going to click on that to download. Click Save. And then we're just going to let that download for a couple of minutes now. So my Pop! OS ISO has finished downloading. And the next thing we're going to have to do is to put this on a bootable USB drive. And to do that, I'm going to use a piece of software called Rufus. There are other programs you can use for this, but Rufus is the one I'm most familiar with, so uh, we're just going to go for that. 
So we've got Rufus open to here. It's picked up that I have a USB drive plugged in. So we're gonna use this 16 gigabyte USB drive for our bootable device. Then we're gonna to have to select the actual ISO that we want to burn onto this USB. So we're gonna select and select our Pop! OS ISO. Okay, and the rest of that is looking okay. So we've got that ready to go. And we're just gonna select start. Obviously all the data on the device will be wiped, that's fine. I've just got a couple of random files in there I don't need, so that's okay. So okay, and we just let it do its thing. Okay, so it's finished burning the ISO file and it's ready to go. So all we need to do now is shut the system down and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull my boot drive with my Windows install on it, just because I don't think it's a good idea to just overwrite that in case. You never know, I might decide I am gonna go back to it in a couple of months time. So I'll keep that boot drive separate from my Linux install and then we'll put this other M.2 drive in and we use this for our Pop! OS installation. So I'll get that pulled out now and then I'll catch you up when we get to the installation. Okay, so we're now in the BIOS for my main rig and I've taken my Windows install out to the system just so we don't have any issues if I want to go back to Windows. So I'm on a completely separate M.2 drive. We have to change our boot settings in order to actually boot off that USB to actually begin installing Pop! OS. So if we head over to boot, and we'll change our boot option to our USB drive. And then save changes and reboot. Okay, we're gonna go try or install Pop! OS. Ooh, that's a lot of code. And there we go, and now we're in the desktop. So it's worth noting that this is not actually the full installation. Install Pop! OS, oh okay. Right, now it's prompted me to install, that's fine. So this is actually just booting off of the USB drive at the moment. And now, why did that keep disappearing? What's, where are you going to? We're just going to go to go ahead and actually install it. So here we go. We can go select language. We're going to go for English. Why are we loading? What are we loading? No? What's happening? Okay, so I'm trying to go for the installation process and now everything has gone completely unresponsive. I'm not quite sure what's happened there. So I'm not quite sure why we froze them. I'm just going to restart the system and see what happens. Okay, we're back to the installation. So let's try and go through this one more time. So English, yes. Why is it not doing anything? It's not a good start. I can move my mouse, but why can't I select anything? Okay, again, I can't seem to do anything. Why is it not having much luck at all with this installation? Okay, so I've actually booted up a third time now and I'm still in the desktop and it's not even capturing to my capture card at the moment. I can move the mouse, but again, I just can't click on anything or do anything. So. I'm gonna have to do a bit of troubleshooting and then get back to you guys once I've figured out what the hell is going on. So, uh, see you in a bit. Okay, so I've managed to actually get into the installation a bit more after actually wiping the SSD that we're gonna install on. So hopefully that's sorted the issue. So we're gonna try and continue with the installation process and see how it goes. I'm just gonna put in Jack, count password. I'll keep this uh, secret from yourselves. Uh, I don't want to encrypt, so we're gonna untick that. I'll put don't encrypt. Okay, and now it seems to be actually going through the installation process. So, fingers crossed that I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so it's asking me to actually restart the device now in order to actually continue setting up. So we'll just click restart and hope for the best. Okay, so I think we've successfully installed Pop! OS. So uh, let's take a look where it wants us to go through here. So, and we froze. Oh, we were so close. Why have we froze now? So after what was a really long day of troubleshooting on Saturday and a lot of hair pulling, I managed to actually find out what was wrong with my Linux install. After a lot of Google searches, I managed to figure out that there was actually some sort of issue with Ryzen Power Management. So all I did was I went back into my BIOS and I did have a negative vCore offset that I had to disable and there was also an option for power idling which I also disabled. And since then I'm proud to report that my install of Linux has been working flawlessly. There has been a slight change though and that is that I did actually end up swapping from Pop! OS to Linux Mint during my troubleshooting process. I think I'll stick with Linux Mint for now as I'm quite happy with the way I've got it looking at the moment. But take a look for yourself. Okay so as you can see this is my full installation of Linux Mint and I've got the desktop looking pretty much how I would like it to be set up. I've got all of my main programs installed and overall I'm quite happy with the way things are looking so far. So as you can see I've just got Firefox installed as well as Spotify, Steam, Discord, OBS, 
GIMP and even VLC and uh, of course I'm using DaVinci Resolve now because I actually cannot use Premiere Pro when I'm actually using Linux unless I start to do a bit of VM work but I thought that might be cheating so I'm going to challenge myself to learn DaVinci Resolve as well which we will take a look at more closely in part 2 where I look at streaming, video editing and some other productivity tasks. And one of the things we can make use of is the terminal itself. And it may seem a little complicated at first, but I promise you it is not too difficult to use after a while. So an example of a kind of command we could use is something to actually install a program. So we could go for sudo apt install dropbox. And it'll ask me to enter my password and it'll slowly fetch what we need for the installation. And it'll go through it and download it for you and install it. So if we take a look now, we'll now see Dropbox is now installed on the system. That is a really simple way of actually downloading something rather than having to actually go to a website. So the terminal is something I'll try and integrate more into my use of Linux as it is a really handy way of actually locating programs or running updates or quite a lot of the things you can use it for. But you may be asking, what if you can't actually find what you're looking for in the terminal? Well, another way of doing that is using what is called a software manager, which basically gives you a full list of all the actual kind of programs you can install. So as you see, it's got a couple of picks on here, stuff like Inkscape, Cheese, Wine. Obviously, Wine would be really useful when it comes to gaming. And a bunch of other programs you can just download directly from here. So you don't have to use the terminal, but of course, it is nice to have that option as well as this if you want to download anything. So besides that, I've got everything pretty much set up how I want it to be. I've even got my TrueNAS fully set up and my Bluetooth devices I've been working. Sadly for my Xbox controller, I have had to plug it in. Unfortunately, there is a bit of a workaround you need to actually set up in order to use the Bluetooth functionality of the controller. But my computer is only two feet away from me, so I can just plug it in for now. It's not a massive issue. But apart from that, I'm really happy with this installation. And obviously we did have a lot of trouble in the beginning of the video, but once I figured out what was wrong, this installation has been absolutely rock solid for the past couple of days. So that just about wraps up for this first part in this long running series. And I'm looking forward to getting into some productivity tasks in part two, where we'll look at how I'm going to adapt to video editing within a Linux installation, as well as doing my weekly streams. So I'm looking forward to getting onto that in the next part. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed part one of this series of Linux videos, then make sure to like and subscribe for the next part in the series coming very soon. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you like to talk more myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord. You'll find all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.